Okay. So I got Excel open up on the right. I'm going to open up the problem on the left, the lab. It's going to be in chapter two. On, online Excel lab two. And it takes you to my open math. I'm going to reset it and, and then hit start. So did everybody find the uh, qualitative data lab? Number I, two? I have. Is everybody, is everybody have it open right here? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. All right. What you need, Joe? The phone? Dinner? Okay. Uh, it's in the black bag. Is everybody done? No. Okay, when they're done, you can give them the snacks, all right? It's the black bag. No, back right there. I got the snacks inside the bag on the bed. All right. So everybody's got this open? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Can you do it one more time? Yeah. Is this for only one? There's just take all the snacks, Joe. When you uh, go into Blackboard, click course content in the vertical bar on the left. Notice the Zoom chat, the Zoom uh, sessions right here. Click on the course content and then go to chapter two's folder. This homework assignment is going to be due. Uh, when is this? Let me know when this is due. I got four sections. So there's a due date for this homework, too. Um, you may want to watch the video lesson first. You don't have to. Also, there's a study plan available for this homework, too. You can do the study plan by clicking on Pearson My Lab right here. So you can, uh, maybe I had to change the name of that. I'll call it study plan. Pearson. So going to the study plan, you can do that first. You don't have to. It just if you need the reps, you can do that. All right. So if you need the reps in Pearson before you do the homework, you can do the study plan. Okay. Let me. Uh, fix that for. Uh, the other class. B, so this is C. I'll check the homework due date too. Let's just click on it. So to open up the uh, homework and the online lab, click course content. <laughs> I guess you just gotta click on it. And then click on chapter two. Watch the video first. And then um, the homework is going to be due, you should say the due date on here. I was I, due yesterday, sir. Oh, homework two was due last night? Okay, good. All right. Yeah, okay, yeah. It was due last night. Okay, cool. All right. Now, if you do it late, you get a 10% penalty for doing it late, okay? Which means your maximum score is a 90. Okay. All right, so that, that homework two was due last night. Um, and I want you to do the homework before you do the online lab, because this is where we're going to apply what I think is the most important stuff in chapter two, right? So next week, Sunday night, homework three will be due. And we'll do the online lab Monday afternoon, right? Following it, because we're going to apply what we learned. 
right? So does everybody have the problem? Everybody's in the problem right here? Yes. Okay. Queuing theory is used by businesses to understand and improve queuing, queuing times for customers. A queue, a queue is just the wait, right? It's a line. So when you go to Applebee's um, on a Sunday night in New York, there's a big wait. You might have to wait 45 minutes to an hour and a half, right? So we give them our cell phone number. We walk over to the uh, Marshalls or we walk over to the Target, Target, the Target. We walk around for a little bit, then we get buzzed, right? Um, so that, that's that's a queuing time, right? Um, at Laverne and Shirley's Waterfront Steakhouse in Florida, the first step of this analysis is analyzing customer questionnaires regarding the amount of time customers waited to be seated, have their, their orders taken, and have their food delivered once their orders were made. Each characteristic is rated on a scale of outstanding O, above average AA, average A, below average BA, and poor, right? Have you guys ever filled out uh, a um, evaluation of a restaurant? Not really. Yes. Have you ever done a Yelp review? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to be basically analyzing that, right? This would be five star right there. That'd be four stars, three stars, two stars, and one star, right? And the table at the bottom of this problem gives the customer ratings regarding the time it took for them to be seated, the customers, after checking in with the host, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to copy this data. And the way you want to copy it is you want to copy it from the question mark. Because sometimes when you copy data into Excel, sometimes the table structure is lost. So we're going to right click on this blue copy, right? We want to pre preserve that, that table structure. You can type it in by hand, but if you have a million observations, you do definitely don't want to type it in by hand, right? So right click, copy, and I'm going to paste it right here in A1. Okay, did everybody get it pasted? Yep, no troubles here, sir. Okay, good. I'm going to get rid of this A question mark. That's from copying the question mark, right? Yeah. Now what I want to do is I want to call this rating. Call that rating. That's the name of the variable, right? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this stuff. I'm going to... Notice when my, my cursor is a white plus. I'm going to go up here to the top middle. It turns into a black plus with arrows. See that? I'm going to drag it down here. See that? I'm going to drag it right there. Okay. I'm going to make a column of data. A variable is usually in a column. Right? So I'm going to repeat that process. Now I'm going to copy these three these three remaining columns, right? I'm going to turn my cursor into a black plus with arrows in all four directions. I'm going to click and hold. Now, if I try to paste it on top of one of them, it'll give me this right here, and I'll just say cancel, right? So I'm going to retry it. You definitely don't want to copy it on top of it, right? And then now I got two columns to copy into A, column A. Again, I'm going to change the white plus into black plus right in the middle of that top green box. Click and drop. And then I'm going to get the final. So how many should I have in column A? I should My last value should be in row 53, right? Everybody got their last value in row 53? And no error messages? Yep. Yes. Okay. Am I going too fast? If I'm going too fast, make sure you slow me down. I've only done this a thousand times. 
<laughs> no, you're not going too fast. Okay. I've done I this a thousand times. 54. <laughs> I, uh, I, I probably went too fast in my first 1,000 times, but I've slowed down in my last 4,000 times because I don't want to lose students, right? And I also inject a lot of commentary, like what, what I'm doing now, just to make sure everybody's caught up. So is everybody caught up? We're all good? Is anybody not caught up? If you don't say anything, I'm going to move on. Right? Okay. I'm going to assume everybody's good. Now, check this out. I'm going to highlight. See what I'm doing? I'm going to click one click, click off, click in cell E4. Then I'm going to one click A1. One click, not double click. If you double click, you'll be inside the cell, right? I don't want to be inside the cell. I want the cell, not inside the cell. So I'm going to one click on A1. And then I'm going to use my shift button. And I'm going to go to the bottom. See that? I'm going to go to the very, very bottom. This is going to make it really easy to do this problem. Right? I should have uh, 53. I should have 53 times one there, right? So just double check. I got everything from rating, right? Everything from rating, the word rating, all the way down to my last uh, customer response, right? Now check this out. If I go, I got I to gotta clear this. If I go to formula and I click on defined, or let me do this. I got to widen this out. I can actually make the spreadsheet bigger now because we're going we're gonna to do all this work and then put it into um, um, my open math, into the lab. So I got everything highlighted, right? I can use my mouse to do it too. See that? I can use my mouse. So it should be 53 rows X times one column, right? I'm going to come up here to Name Manager. I'm going to click on Name Manager under Formulas tab. So you want to click, click the Formulas tab, right? And then you want to click on Name Manager. Okay. Whoops. Let's do this. Sorry. Instead of clicking on Name Manager, we're going to click on Create from Selection. Notice it says top the top row is check marked. You want to check mark your top row. You don't want to check mark anything else. Okay. And when you hit OK, what's going to happen? Well, if I go to Name Manager, if I go back to Name Manager, I'm going to see the name rating, and it, that's from A2. The in my case, an O, right? A2 is right here. A2. A2 down to what? A53. So let's do this to show you another way. If I, instead of clicking on A1, I one click A2, and then I use shift and the down arrow, right? And I stop it at A53. Notice what what's in this box here. You see what's in that box? What's in that box above A1? Up here. The name. In this yeah, case, so, rating. Yeah, so rating is the Excel object. It's a, an object in Excel is a group of cells. They could be in a column. They could be in a grid, they can be in a row, right? Or it could be a worksheet. But this Excel object we've named rating. And it's from A2 down to A53. Now, why did I do that? Because I'm gonna, it's gonna make the analysis a breeze. It's gonna make the analysis a breeze. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do, I wanna copy this table. So I'm gonna copy this table.
Notice I copied below and then everything in the table, right? You see that? I included the word below. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it over here in cell C1. Okay. Everybody get that? So everybody should have the ratings in A2 all the way down to A53, right? And then when you highlight A2 down to A53, the word up here should be rating up here in this box right below the FX. This box should have the word rating in it, right? And then you want to have the word rating in cell C3 and then outstanding in C4, above average in C5, average in C6, et cetera, et cetera, and the total in C9. Okay? Have I lost anybody? I'm going to take a break and drink my coffee while people catch up or they indicate that they're lost. By the way, when you're pasting stuff in from HTML, you copy it and then right click it. When you right click or you two finger click with your mouse, you get options. I always choose match destination formatting or text, right? You see that? I don't want to bring the structure in from the HTML, right? Does anybody have some weird looking stuff right here? Like an answer box? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that happened to me. Okay, what you can but do- it won't, it, won't, it won't let me get rid of it. I'm trying to yeah. get rid of it and I can't. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you share your screen. <laughs> well, I'm actually, so actually I have you on my iPad and then I have everything else oh. on my laptop. So I can't okay. share that. Okay, so do, does anybody have like these boxes in here? I can volunteer. Okay, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna I'm, I'm allowing you to share your screen and I'm gonna stop my share so you can share yours. Uh, okay, Um. hold on, on a moment. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, do a control Z. Oh no, just click in yeah, click in cell N1. N1. Okay, anybody that has a situation, click in N1 and then do a control Z. Yeah, I'm I can't I'm I'm doing that, but it won't it's not doing anything. You have a Mac? No, this is a computer. Okay. Let me request remote control. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is come up here. All right. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is this. We're gonna copy, everybody copy over here. Copy that column A. We're going to create a new sheet. And notice what I'm going to do here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to right click. I'm going to use values. See that? Values. Okay. You want to paste text, right? And then I'm going to delete sheet one. That's the only way you get rid of it. Okay. So whenever you're pasting, always choose the uh, option that says text, right? And then, oh, do you have your other window? Oh, we already have it, don't we? We can do this. We can right click. Wait a minute. We can right click. Oh, yeah, we, we you need to uh, go get the table from, you know, that table. One moment. And yes, 
Uh, I've actually done that, as you can see. Yeah. All right. I just do it like that. Copy that table with that word below and then paste it in C1. But right click or two finger click on C1. All right. Right click. Okay, C1. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Right here. Match destination formatting. See that? Okay. Yeah. Much better. Okay. Everybody got that? Now let's let's pull it down. Let's pull it down here because we want uh rating in C3, right? Yeah. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this stuff because we're not gonna use it. I'm gonna okay. show you I'm gonna show you how to do the code for that, all right? Okay, so when you're right clicking, when you're copying stuff from HTML, right? You want to right click and then choose the thing that's like text or the thing that says match destination formatting, right? If you if you just paste, you're going to pull in all that HTML junk. And those answer boxes are objects and they become Excel objects and you can't delete them. Okay. Everybody got it? Everybody okay. get it? Uh, what the? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna play with uh, these things here. I'm gonna show you something in Excel. All right. Okay. Now notice. Let me uh, hide the video panel. Whoops, my mouse is all messed up. I need a mouse pad. I'm putting it on a piece of paper. Okay, I put a meeting control. So here we go. All right. So notice that there's a bit there's a, a phrase in here called relative frequency. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight these three things. I'm gonna go to home and then I'm gonna click this thing up here called wrap text. You see it? Wrap text. Did you go through all of them? Frequency, relative frequency, and the percent frequency? Yeah, I'm going to highlight all three of them. See that? I highlight all three of them. Right? Okay. I want to click. I want to, Then I want to click on the Home tab. And I'm going to click up here next to the bottom align. Right to the right of it is a thing called Wrap Text. I'm going to click that. See what happened? And then I'm going to highlight these columns and just widen them out a little bit. There we go. And then if you double click inside of it, you can hit enter and it'll auto make the auto height, right? That looks pretty good, doesn't it? And then your work always needs to be dressed up, right? So we're gonna dress up, dress it up a little bit. I'm gonna change the background to blue. I'm gonna change the font to white. That looks pretty sweet, right? <clears throat> and I'll do the same thing with total. Blue background. If you watch HGTV, you know, it's all like blues and grays now, right? Home home decor. It's like blues and grays. And I bold face the white. That looks pretty sharp, doesn't it? Any questions? Now, one last thing. I'm going to insert a column between D and C. Okay, check this out. I'm going to click on column D, and I'm going to insert a column. Okay. Insert a column here. I'm going to skinny it up. Okay, what is the code for outstanding? Oh, right. What's the code for above average? AA, and then average is just A, and then below average is what? BA. When I was a student, when I was a high school student, we'd go cruising on Main Street, and my brother Ryan was driving the 1976 Chrysler Cordova for my my stepfather, and my buddy Bingo and I would BA people. 
I don't recommend it. You get pulled over by the cops. I was a little bit, I was a bit of a hellion when I was a kid. <laughs> that That's not what VA is, right? VA is below average. Okay. All right. Now, what does it tell us to do? It tells us to use this count if function, right? I'm just going to copy it. Or better yet, check out what Excel does for you. Now, notice I'm not in the cell. I'm outside the cell, right? I'm using the up arrows. Okay, in the outstanding row under frequency, I'm going to just type equals, and I'm going to type count. Because what is a frequency? A frequency is a count, right? And then count if. You see that? Excel, well, it's trying to figure out what you want to do, right? And it gives you some suggestions. We're going to do a count if. Okay. Now, what are you going to type in the range? I mean, I could highlight A2 down to A53, right? Or what did I name it? What I name the range of cells, A2 to A53, what do we name it? Rating. Rating. So we're just going to type rating. And notice when I start typing rating, oh, see, this is a this is an object in Excel, right? See the table? Rating is a group of cells. Fx is a function. Rating is an object. Right, we have these other functions down here, right? You see that? So I can just double click rating. And when I double click rating, what happened? Oh man, that's cool. The the ratings, mine starts at O, outstanding, and ends at outstanding. They're all highlighted, aren't they? You see how cool that is? And then you do what? Comma, and then what? Count. Rating if what? It's a oh. So this says count rating if what? Oh, right. You see that? I want to count the stuff in rating if it equals O. Not O and home. I don't fit in, I fits out. Home is a good movie, by the way. Any questions on that? So how many how many O's did I have? So I quick have, question. How do I get that rating where it's highlighted again? Uh, rating? Oh, yeah. You just type it. Oh, no, no. is this Craig? Yeah, I want to get that blue box. Okay, yeah. What you do is you... Here's another way to do it. You can highlight just from A2. Hold the shift button. Go all the way down to 53. And then right here, you can just type the word rating. Just type the word rating. And then hit enter. Okay. That's another way to do it. Okay. You got it? Yeah, thanks. Okay, cool. Now, how are we going to get above average? Well, I could type it, right? Count if. I want to count. Whoops. Parenthesis. I want to count uh, rating, right? Rating. If what? I don't want to type AA. I want to click on AA, right? D5. D5 contains the criteria, right? You all see that? Yeah. Now, what's the fast way to do this? Well, watch this. If I just click on the first one and I pull it down, notice what happens. It drags the formula down, doesn't it? You see that? Oh, yeah. Is that cool? E you guys are getting money's worth now, right? <laughs> hey, uh, quick question. I do the count if uh, rating, uh -huh. and it, it just pulls up zero every time. Okay, can you share or can you, if you share, can you put your phone or whatever in front of your screen? 
Yeah, I can share my screen. Okay, let me uh, turn off my share. Justin. Okay, oh, you can use green, nice. Okay, double click on it. Oh, yeah, um, if you're gonna do it that way, you wanna put quotes around the O. Put quotes around the O. No quotes, double quotations. But the problem with that is drag it down now. Dra you know, gra grab, the no, 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 no. Grab the right-hand corner, the bottom right-hand corner. Pull that down. See what happens? Keep going. Whoop. Whoop, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Grab, do a control, hit escape, the escape button, and then do control Z. Control Z. Yeah, there you go. Now grab the bottom right-hand corner. What's going on here? You don't want to type O in, in quotation marks, right? Click on that very first 37. Double click it. Delete the quotation marks with the zero, the O. Yeah, delete it. Delete it. Hit delete. Okay, now don't hit enter. Go back up. Delete that O. Now click on the O in cell D4. In cell D4, 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 D4. There you go. Now hit under. Now pull that, drag that down. There you go. See what happened? Cool, huh? Cool. Justin, you got to admit that was pretty cool, right? Not cool? All right, I'll, I'll assume you think it's cool. I'll assume, you, I'll assume that you think it's awesome. All right, let me uh, hide the uh, video panel and hide the floating controls. Yeah, there we go. All right, now what are we going to do? How many of these do we have? Excel will tell you, right? I got 52. Yeah, see right here, I highlighted them. It says 52 rows, one column. So what are we going to put right here? What are we going to put here? Uh, sum. Sum, right? So you want to type equal sum, parenthesis, and then what? I'm going to just, I'm using my arrow keys, right? I'm using my arrow keys. I got sum E4 to E8. Yeah. So I'm using my arrow keys. Everybody see that on my keyboard? Then I'm going to hold down my shift button. One, two, three, four. I'm going to sum those five things, right? You can't see it, but you, you can tell right here what it is. There it is. It's sum E4 to E8, then hit enter. And you get 52, right? Is that cool? All right. Yeah. Now, how do we turn frequencies... In the relative freaks like me, don't you? That's pussycat dolls, by the way. The pussycat dolls. Like the frequency by the total. Yeah, the the pussycat dolls were singing about frequencies, right? Don't you wish your freak was a relative freak like me? Don't you? Yeah. Did anybody hear that song? Has anybody heard that song? Nobody's heard that song. I have. Okay, it's an old song. It's right? been a while. <laughs> It's an old song. It wasn't a beer commercial for a while. But they're singing about relative frequencies, right? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to divide the 32 by the 52, right? You see that? Now I'm going to show you something, right? Remember when we dragged it down? I'm going to drag it down here. I'm going to, I'm going to reduce the number of decimal places to four. And I'm going to pull this down. All right, what's going on here? 
you got to make the D, the E9 absolute. Yeah, I want to I want to fix row 9, right? Yeah. 52 is in row 9. See that? Mhm. Mm I want to fix row 8. How do I fix row E or the the ninth row in this? I think it's F4. You can do F4. F4 does what? Makes it absolute. In, in a in a laptop, a PC, you have to push the function button and then you hit F the F4 key, right? Oops. Wait, what you do? You gotta make it absolute. Yeah, if you have a PC with a if you have a desktop computer, you just hit the F, the F4 key. But if you have a laptop, a PC laptop, you have to hold down the function key and then press F4. The button, the, the F4 key. Whoops. That's weird. All right, mine's not doing it. One, two, three, four. There it goes. See what it does? If I if I hold down the FN button and then the F4 key again. Dad, where are all the snacks? Joe has them in the black bag. <laughs> right? I can keep hitting it, right? And it changes the dollar sign position. You see that? The dollar sign is not changed. Dollars are dollars, right? So really, we could just do um, E9, right? With the dollar sign between the E and the 9. The dollar sign in front of the 9 says don't change the row when you copy it to the cells below. Hey, that rhymes. Okay. You see that? Now... We're fro we freeze cell E9 in row nine, right? You see that? Now you can you can have dollar signs in front of the E if you want to. Yeah, you, you can do that too, right? You want at least one dollar sign in front of the nine. Right? We don't want we don't want coin in our pocket. We don't want coins in our pocket, we want dollars. We don't want change, right? We want dollars. So you put a dollar sign in front of the nine. Okay. Now, what do these relative frequencies add up to? What do they add up to? One. One. Relative frequencies add up to one. Just like <clears throat> a probability distribution adds up to one, right? You can think of this as the probabilities, right? You can think of these as probabilities. <clears throat> okay. Now, what do we do about a percent frequency? What do we do? These are in percentages, right? What are we going to multiply? How do we turn a relative freak into percent freak like me? Don't you? I'm going to use the equal sign. I'm going to click with my left arrow key. And then I'm going to multiply by 100. Anybody know what the word percent means? In English, in the in the English English, the word percent in England is spelled per cent, right? What is what does the word cent mean? Century, cents. What does the word cent mean? One hundred. One hundred. So this this just means per hundred. That's all it means, per hundred. Okay, you can turn off, Joe. That's all that means is per hundred, right? So we're, this is per hundred, per hundred, 61.54 per hundred, right? That's all that means. We have, in America, we just call it percent, right? It could have been per thousand, right? You could, you could come up with a word called per K, Right, perk. Perk could be per k per one thousand. Right. Okay. So sixty one point five four, and then we drag this down, and then what do we, what are these sum to? What are percent frequency sum to? One hundred. One hundred. Right. Now we can fill in the information over here. Right. Now we can fill in the information. So 32, I'm going to use the tab button, 32, 0 
five four, sixty one point five four seven, zero point one three four six, thirteen point four six. Uh, average rating, there's four average ratings, 0 0.0769. And your numbers might be different than mine, right? 7.69. Below average, there were seven below average ratings. That's 0 0.1346 or 13.46%. 13 poor, there were two poor ratings. 0.0385 or 3.85%. If I hit enter, I get green check marks, right? Woo! Makes you feel good, doesn't it? Then I got to do Wait, the total. How, how'd you get that? How'd you get that one? Which one? The check marks. Oh, you just hit enter. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Cool, huh? Yeah. Well, that's most of the problem right there. Right? I'm going to let you guys answer this question on your own and then hit enter when you when you uh, answer this question on your own. And then let me know if you got it right. The percentage of ratings being average or better. Notice you do not need a percent symbol, right? You don't need to put you don't need to put a percent symbol in here, right? So I want you to answer that question on your own and let me know what you got. Do you want that answer based off of yours or our own? Off yours. Off yours. Off yours. Oh, okay. And use Excel to do it, right? Use Excel to do it. All right, I pretty much finished mine. Okay. We're going to do uh, charts. We're going to do some charts, too. If you want to hang out for the charts? Hmm? We're going to build a bar chart and a pie chart, if you want to wait. Okay. Just in case you want to learn how to do it, right? It's not, it's not well, really a part of the problem. I'm just going to show you how to do it. So you know how to do it I if you want you know, for another class. I have a question. Uh -huh. For mine, I followed the book. So I built the full table with the frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency. Mm -hmm. That's how I answered my answer B. Oh, but yeah. if I hadn't done that, would I have just added up um, ratings average or better? Everything from Average, yeah. above average and outstanding. Yep. Is that all that would have? Yep. I just needed to do that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna do it right here. How many people got the the green check mark? Me. Everybody got the green check check mark there. Yeah, I got I it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I put that yellow cell there, and I'm gonna just do some here. I'm gonna use the arrow key on my keyboard, the up arrow key. And then above average better includes outstanding. I'm going to hold the shift button down. It includes above average and it includes average, right? Is that cool? Then I'm just going to hit enter. And then I'm going to copy that and paste it over here and see if I got it right. Nice. Right? That's good, right? Okay, with the previous customer satisfaction questionnaire, management noted that 74% of all customer ratings were average or better. Based on your analysis, should management be pleased with the new rating results? Would management be pleased if the results were mine? Do my results show an improvement in customer ratings? Or a shrink, uh, a, a collapse in customer ratings. Mine's more or less the collapse side of things. 
Yours is? Yes, sir. Okay, so what did you have, Craig? What okay. Have? Okay. According to what I've got, it looks like the percentage of ratings being average or better equals 28.85%. And for C, it was 74%. Yeah, And based on the analysis, management should not be pleased with the new rating results, considering the piss poor performance. Yeah, exactly. But my mine would be yes, right? So everybody's going to have different results, right? Yeah. And then if you want to check your answer, you can put the cursor in that box and then hit enter, right? And I got it marked yes. So I got yes, right? Management would be happy with our survey, right? So maybe these surveys are like once a month or once a week, right? And so if, since we all have different numbers, we can kind of assume they will all have a different week, right? And we're kind of like monitoring this, you know, each week, right? If the trend is down, right? We're gonna have to figure out why it's going down. If the trend is up, we want to celebrate our team, right? Our team has done a great job. If this week was 74, if next week it's 82.69, if the next week it's 83%, if the next week it's 87%, we need to celebrate that, right? But if it's going the opposite direction, we got something wrong in our store, right? We got something wrong in our store. And what happens when you upset a customer? Do they come back? Nope. They don't come back Not unless you get your act together. Yeah. So um, you can you can do a great job for 30 years and then you can do one stupid thing and you can end your relationship with your customers on one incident. Right. Look at Bud Light. Um, Bud Light. Who drinks Bud Light? Do people that go to uh, the opera um, drink Bud Light? Who generally drinks Bud Light? Dudes that like football. You like football. You like hunting. You might have a pickup truck with mutter tires. What happened to Bud Light this year? It's sales. Sank? They sank, right? Why'd they sink? Because Bud Light was representing a transgender person. Yeah, they, they, they thought it'd be smart. Right. They didn't know their customers very well. Maybe they don't like their customers. Right. Maybe it's run by a, a group of people who really don't like conservative beer drinking guys that go to football games or hunt pheasants on the weekend. Right. Maybe it doesn't like those kinds of people. Right. So the moral of that story is you don't want to be Dixie chicked. Anybody know what I mean by Dixie chicked? <laughs> yeah. I, I use Dixie chick as a verb. Dixie chicked. The Dixie chicks were the biggest country band on the planet in the early 2000s during the Gulf War. Now, conservatives tend to be country fans, right? They tend to support Republican presidents, right? They support the troops. They support the, well, back then it seemed like the Republicans were pro-war and Democrats were anti-war. So uh, when Natalie Raines, I think her name's Natalie Raines, when she was overseas in Europe, she was asked by um, a European rep reporter what she thought of the war or President Bush and the war in Afghanistan. And she said some negative things with troops in harm's way in Afghanistan. Well, because we live in the Internet age. What happened? Their sales tanked. They went from being the biggest band on the planet to not being a country band at all. They basically their sales collapsed down to zero. Right. So you have to know who your customers are. If you don't like your customers, you at least have to respect them, right? Now, why didn't not, not, not when uh, Colin Kaepernick started this protest, uh, NFL attendance fell off um, and viewership went down, but Nike sales went up, right? Why was it Nike Dixie chicked uh, like the NFL was? The NFL suffered a little bit of uh, ratings collapse, not much. Um, they had a they had a drop off in attendance in those years, right? But 
Nike didn't have any of that. Nike actually did much better. Why is that? Who are Nike's customers versus who are on average the NFL's customers, right? Well, those are two different groups of people, right? They're, they are two different groups of people, right? There are progressives, uh, Democrats who go to football games. There are, right? Uh, but I, I would say a lot of them are kind of conservative. They probably vote Republican. They love the national anthem being played at the football games. And the, the ones that didn't appreciate the protest, they boycotted the NFL. Now, it wasn't as bad as being, they weren't Dixie chicked because there's a group of fans that, you know, don't really care about that stuff. Or they, they appreciate the fact that they respected Colin Kaepernick's right to free speech, right? Because that's a core American principle, right? So the NFL wasn't Dixie chicked, but it did suffer some lower ratings and lower ticket prices, right? But it wasn't a death knell like it has been for Bud Light or um, the Dixie Chicks, right? The Nike, on the other hand, I mean, who are their who are their customers? Well, their customers are uh, probably mostly, you know, I mean, their ads are targeted to, you know, like runners and NBA. I mean, they got NBA contracts. So the Nike customers, a different group of people, probably appreciated uh, Colin Kaepernick's protest, right? So you have to know who your customers are. If you don't like them, you have to at least respect them, right? If you don't respect them, you don't like them, you're probably going to do something that's going to upset them and you're going to be out of business pretty quick, right? So firms will use these kind of data to understand how much their customers appreciate their products and services. If you're not providing value, a service or a product that people value, people aren't going to buy, right? But, I mean, if you're a low-cost producer and your customer service is horrible, but you're the low-cost producer, you probably get away with it. But if you're a high-end seller, um, you got to pay attention to these ratings, right? Cool. All right. Now, let me know what kind of rating is, what kind of data rating is, and why. What kind of date, what kind of type, what type of data is rating? This was in the reading, right? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, it's to yeah. Wesley A. Tully snack. Oh. Okay, okay, we'll discuss that we'll, later. Yeah, we'll have to discuss that in a little while, All right? Okay, yes. yes okay, we will. To, to no, you All right, that. anybody got an idea on that? Is it quantitative? Is it categorical? It's categorical, right? It, a categorical and qualitative are the same thing. Your book might have had categorical. Your, your book, the textbooks vary. Some call it categorical. Some call it qualitative. Qualitative, because it has a, it's about a quality, right? Or it's a category, right? So it's cate, it's um, categorical data, right? What about the scale? What what scale is it? What are the four scales of data? There's ratio, there's interval, ordinal. there's nominal, and there's ordinal, right? When the data when the data is categorical, what must the scales be? If it's categorical, there's two scales for categorical. Nominal or ordinal. Nominal and ordinal. Ordinal applies, there's an order, right? Other than alphabetical. Nominal means there's no order. Nominal, nominal, no order. Ordinal means there's an order other than alphabetical. Is there an order to these observations? Yeah, everybody wants outstanding, right? Nobody wants poor. You want outstanding ratings, right? Outstanding is better than, everybody will agree outstanding is better than av above average. Everybody will agree that above average is better than average. And everybody will agree that below average is worse than average. And poor is the worst of the ratings, right? Nobody will disagree with that order. So the data 
this rating variable has an ordinal scale, right? Categorical data is either ordinal or it's nominal, right? Ordinal and nominal. And then if you want to check your answer, you can click on that box and hit enter. Okay, we got 100 out of 100, right? Now, if you want to hang out and um, figure out how to do a bar chart, I recommend it. Um, it doesn't take long to do a bar chart. I know it's 501. We got kind of a late start. But this is how you do a bar chart. Hold down the shift button in Excel. Hold down the shift button and the control button in the Mac. Hold down shift and command. Uh, shift and command. In a PC, hold down control and shift. Whoops, that's weird. Okay. What's going on here? All right. Well, let's first highlight it. Oh, sorry. Uh, just hold down the control button or command button. Just hold down the control button. And then you can click on these things, right? And we're gonna do we're gonna do percent frequencies. Okay, so I've highlighted. I highlight the outstanding to poor. I hold down the control button. I click on that and then I pull it down. See that? So I've highlighted the percent frequencies, and the outstanding, right? I want to go up here to insert. And I want to pick, I'm going to go to charts or recommended charts. I notice I got one recommended right here, right? The bar chart. Outstanding, above average, average, below average, and poor. I'm going to click on that one. Okay. I'm going to put it right below the data. Okay. Does the shape matter? Does the shape matter? When the data has, when the data is quantitative or categorical with ordinal scale, the shape matters, right? The shape matters because outstanding is the best, poor is the worst, right? Um, and then I can click on the chart title and change it to customer ratings. Okay. Any questions on that? Then I can do the same thing for a bar, a pie chart. I highlight those. Then I hold down the control button in a PC, the command button in a PC, in a, la in a Mac, and then I highlight the percent frequencies. And then I go to insert and I'm gonna choose the pie chart. Okay, so here's a pie chart. It tells, you same, it tells you the same information, right? Now I'm gonna be happy, as a manager, I'm gonna be happy when I look at this, right? Customer ratings. I'm going to be happy with this, aren't I? Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Um, Snar. Yeah. Uh, so for my uh, problem, I got. What's that? I got um, I got two of them wrong. Uh, do we round off to the um to the fourth place of the number or? The relative frequencies you want around a four, the percent frequencies around a two. So for the relative, I got I got two parts wrong. I got the below average for relative frequency incorrect, and then the poor relative frequency incorrect. But they're the okay. same as, but they're the same exact number. Well, well, what we'll do is after we're done, I'll help you get yours fixed. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any questions on that? Now you can you can modify the legend. Um, I wanted to put it on the uh, 
Let's do this. Let's get rid of the legend. Whoops. Damn. Whenever you delete something by mistake, do a control Z. Do this. Right click on a pie, a slice of pie. And then I think you should be able to. Let's try this again. Add data labels. There we go. Format. Data labels. We have value and series name. There we go. Oh, no, not series name. There am I got it right. Thank you. Oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah, I think it's probably the best we can do there. Now, you could probably do it this way, too. Format data labels. Get rid of the value. Now, you just have the, uh, the name, right? Nice and clean. So that's pretty, I think it's a pretty good pie chart, right? We should be really happy with this, right? We have very few poor ratings. When wealthier customers go to a really nice, like three-star hotel, they tend to give it a poor rating. But when people in the bottom 50% of the income distribution go, they might end up giving it a five-star, right? Rating. So the income of the customer, you're not going to make, your customers aren't going to be happy. All, not all your customers are going to be 100% happy and give you an outstanding rating, right? Rich people expect really good service, right? And they might give the Best Western a one-star rating, whereas somebody like me, growing up with my parents, poor, we probably would have given it a five-star rating, right? Because it was awesome for us. So you got you got you got to dig a little deeper in the data too, right? If your core customer, if your if your tar target customers aren't wealthy people, if your target customers are middle income people and below, you want to you want to know what they think about your hotel, right? Cuz they're your target market, right? So I would be happy if this were my results, right? Any questions on that? Looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty good. Looking good here. All right, sweet. Um, there's no more questions. We'll call it a night and I'll post this video for others to use. Hey, Professor. Has it Robert, already been go? submitted? Because what's up? Okay, I'm looking at mine right here. I got my score, progress saved. How do how do Oh, I see it. I just submit the question to you. Yeah, you should just, it should, once, once you get all the green check marks, it's good. Okay, I just only got one of them. That's because I got one of the answers wrong. Oh, okay. Uh, is it, is it, is the box grayed out? Yeah, I can't, I can't edit it anymore. So if you want 100%, let me uh, stop the video. Well, if you want 100% the situation, You'd have to get a similar question and redo it. Eh, I'll be fine with just this one. I'm, it's pretty good. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right, I'm going to submit it then. Okay, cool. Hey, Professor Snar, um, um, this, I just wanted to talk to you about econ really quick, uh, microeconomics. It says yeah, let that me, I have... Yeah, let me, let me turn off the uh, recording. Oh, okay.